Hi, in this video we take a look at 3JS and WebGL shaders. We try to create a simple and unique effect like this, where textures are flowing into a direction and we can change parameters like flow direction, speed and repeat of the texture. First of all, what are shaders? Shaders are computation instructions which are executed on the GPU. Essentially, there are two types of shaders, the vertex shader and the fragment shader. A 3D object is described by a mesh. A mesh has vertices. Each vertex has a normal vector and a UV coordinate. Three vertices create a face. With the normal vectors, you know into which direction the face is pointing. With the UV coordinate, a 3D vertex is mapped into a 2D coordinate, which then can be used to sample a 2D texture and put it onto the faces of the mesh. So this is how a basic WebGL vertex shader looks like. This shader is executed for all vertices of a mesh object. The job here is to calculate the vertex position in a normalized clipping space. At the top you see the precision settings for numeric data types. All it does is setting the bit size of the types. More bits means more precision, but is also slower and vice versa. Just some boilerplate code which you need to deal with. Then there are uniforms. Uniforms are global data which are the same for all shader of the mesh object. We have here the model view matrix and the projection matrix. Both are four dimensional matrices. The job of the model view matrix is to place, rotate and scale the mesh object within the three dimensional world. The position, rotation and scale properties of a mesh are stored in this matrix. The projection matrix stores camera settings such as field of view, near far clipping values and aspect ratio and so on. Then we have the vertex attributes. I already explained what the vertex position, normal and UV are. In the main function we must capture Calculate the vertex position in the clip space coordinate and store it in a predefined variable by the name of gl underscore position. The three dimensional vertex position is made into a four dimensional vector with a fourth value of 1. The fourth value is used during clipping of the scene and determines if a portion of an object is visible or discarded. You also see that we have a varying variable. The current vertex UV is stored into the varying variable. These varying variables are a way to hand over data from vertex shader to fragment shader. It is important to know that after vertex computation, the 3D object is rasterized into fragments, you may also call them pixels. Each fragment is calculated by a fragment shader and gets a different varying parameter which is computed by interpolating between varying values of the vertices. This is how the basic corresponding fragment shader looks like. After the usual precision settings, we have a uniform of type Sampler2D. This can be used to sample and upload a texture. We will see how to upload a texture to this shader with 3JS later. Then we have the varying UV for this fragment, as mentioned before. The job of the fragment shader is to calculate the fragment color in RGBA values and store them into a variable by the predefined name of gl underscore frag color. The type of this variable is of type 4-dimensional vector. This simple fragment shader renders an object with a texture. By calling the method texture2d, we sample the color from a given sampler2d object and the UV coordinate. We sample the color of the texture and store them into the predefined variable. In the main function you can do more complex shading effects like normal mapping, diffuse and specular light shading, which of course requires more global information such as light sources and PBR texture maps and so on. And also you need to know the correct mathematical methods to do that. I want to apply those shaders on a box object, so I create a new 3JS box geometry. 3JS box geometry contains vertices with positions, normals and UVs, which will be available as attributes in my vertex shader. In the fragment shader we will use a texture, so I use the 3JS texture loader to load a texture from an image file. On the loaded texture object, I set the wrap S and wrap T attributes to repeat wrapping. This is important, these attributes tell how to wrap a texture on the horizontal and vertical axis if I exceed the UV interval between 0 and 1. Then I create a 3JS raw shader material. I provide the vertex and fragment shaders which I have shown before. And also I provide uniforms to the shader material. I define a uniform with the name color map. The uniform names must match the uniform names in the shader source code. The uniform must have a property with the name value and here I assign my texture. 
At last I create a new 3JS mesh with the box geometry and the shader material and add it to the scene. Now I have a box with a texture. I actually want to use two texture layers and mix them together. The first texture is the background and the second should add some details on top and has a transparent background. So I use the texture loader again to load the second texture layer. Also I want to make each texture flow into a direction. For each layer I create an object which describes the behavior of the layer. It contains the color map, a two-dimensional flow direction vector to move along the UV coordinates, the flow speed and a two-dimensional vector which tells how many times to repeat the texture on each axis. So I add these objects as layer 1 and layer 2 uniform variables to my shader material. As an extra I use this npm package to create a simple graphical user interface to change these uniform values during runtime. Additionally I must know the current time during fragment shading, so I create another simple numeric uniform with the name time. This value is updated every frame within the animation loop. I need to consume these uniforms in my fragment shader. At first I add a uniform of type float with the name time. The layer behavior objects can be mapped to a structure within the shader program. So I define a struct with the name layer containing properties with the same names which I have added in my JavaScript code. The color map, the flow direction, the flow speed and the repeat vector all with the corresponding types. I define two uniform variables with the same names which I defined in my JavaScript code and of the type layer. Now I can use the data in my shader. At first I define a function within the fragment shader code to offset the varying UV. This function requires the current UV, the flow direction, the flow speed and the repeat vector as an input. In here I normalize the flow direction vector to ensure it has the length of 1. Then I return a new two-dimensional vector, where both vector components are the UV components multiplied by the repeat vector components and moved by the flow direction vector multiplied by flow speed and time. In the main method I use it to calculate offset UVs for each texture layer. Then I sample each layer texture with the corresponding offset UVs and finally mix both sampled colors together by adding them and assigning the result to the gl underscore fragment color variable. This is the result. When changing the uniform values during runtime, they take immediate effect in the shader and are immediately visible. With writing your own shaders, you can create unique graphic effects. The possibilities are endless. 